Hey everyone, Dr. Mungi here. In this video, I will be explaining you in brief about synthesis of membrane phospholipids. Now, membrane phospholipids can be broadly classified into glycerophospholipids and sphingophospholipids. In glycerophospholipids, glycerol will be backbone in that particular lipid molecule. Whereas in sphingophospholipids, sphingosin will be the backbone. Note that all glycerophospholipids, they are all synthesized from a carbohydrate intermediate called dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Now the dihydroxyacetone phosphate, it will be converted into glycerol 3 phosphate and glycerol 3 phosphate furthermore, it will be converted into phosphatidate. Phosphatidate will be converted into diacylglycerol, triacylglycerol and also phosphatidate can be converted into phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylethanolamine, phosphatidyl inositol 1,5, phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 bisphosphate, cardiolipine and all kinds of molecules. All these the glycerophospholipid molecules, they are all coming from a carbohydrate intermediate that is dihydroxyacetone phosphate. One of the most abundant glycerophospholipid present in our membranes is phosphatidylcholine. Now this phosphatidylcholine, it has a glycerol backbone, it has attached with two fatty acids, phosphate and a choline molecule. Now I have written a structure of phosphatidylcholine and that's a example for glycerophospholipid. You have a glycerol backbone that is carbon number 1 carbon number 2 and carbon number 3, there are 3 carbons, that is the backbone and the first carbon is attached with the fatty acid 1 and this is the first fatty acid, fatty acid 1, it can be different type of fatty acid and then fatty acid 2 attached to the second carbon and the third carbon is attached with the phosphate and this to this phosphate a functional group will be attached and the functional group here that is attached here is choline. Choline is CH2, CH2N plus and 3 methyl group attached. So this entire structure we call it as phosphatidylcholine. And this phosphatidylcholine is also called as lecithin. And this is the predominant type of glycerophospholipid that is found over the membranes. It is the abundant glycerophospholipid present in the membrane and that is phosphatidylcholine and it has two fatty acids attached to the first and second carbon atom, third carbon has phosphate and attached to the choline. Now, if you remove this choline and attach with ethanolamine and that will become phosphatidylethanolamine. If you remove this choline and attach with inositol 4,5-bisphosphate, that will become phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 bisphosphate. Like this, depending on what is the functional group that is attached to this phosphate, you get that kind of glycerophospholipid. All of them will be part of our cell membrane. And as I said before, most abundant phospholipid is phosphatidylcholine, which is also called as lecithin. Now, when the cell membrane is undergoing turnover, so during the turnover process, so this kind of phospholipids need to be degraded. Now the degradation of glycerophospholipids will be going on in the lysosomes. Now we have specific enzymes to degrade these phospholipids. Now the enzyme that will break this ester bond here, this ester bond is broken by phospholipase A1 enzyme. And this phosphor bond is broken by phospholipase A2 enzyme. And then this phosphate and the carbon bond is broken down by phospholipase C enzyme. And the ester bond here, this will be broken down by phospholipase D enzyme. All these phospholipases, phospholipase A1, phospholipase A2, phospholipase C and phospholipase D enzymes, they all will break this a complex glycerophospholipid molecule into individual components and thereby get a glycerol, fatty acids, phosphate and a choline molecule and they will undergo a turnover process, recycling process in our body. Okay, 
So we have a phospholipase A2 which is inhibited by corticosteroids. Corticosteroids inhibit phospholipase A2 thereby really uh, decreases the release of arachidonic acid which is bound to glycerol phospholipid at the second carbon of glycerol. So that's how steroids would work. So this is about how glycerol phospholipids are synthesized and how they are degraded in our body in brief. Now let me explain to you how sphingophospholipids are synthesized in our body and uh, what is the function of each of these sphingophospholipids. The sphingophospholipids being present over the cell membrane, so they are going to participate in cell-cell communication and also sphingolipids, they are participating as a antigenic determinants on our cell membranes. Now the sp all sphingolipids, they are all derivatives of ceramide. Now the ceramide itself, it is, it is synthesized from amino acid serine and palmitylcoe. Now the serine is a hydroxyl containing amino acid, palmitylcoe is a most common saturated fatty acid that is synthesized in our body. So the serum, uh, serine and palmitylcoe is condensed, they will condense with one another in endoplasmic reticulum, especially smooth endoplasmic reticulum and will uh, undergo further reduction process to make ceramide. And I have written a structure of ceramide here. This entire structure, that is this part here, this entire structure, we refer this structure as spingosin. So this is the spingosin structure and to this spingosin a fatty acid is attached and the third carbon has got hydroxyl group and that this entire molecule we refer it as ceramide. This is the ceramide molecule. Now to this ceramide, depending on if you replace this H present in the ceramide and attach a functional group here, depending on what functional group is attached here, that kind of sphingophospholipid you are going, sorry, sphingolipid you are going to get. Now I am going to attach phosphatidylcholine here. Now if I attach phosphatidylcholine, that is ceramide plus phosphatidylcholine. So ceramide plus phosphatidylcholine is nothing but a sphingomyelin. This is the sphingomyelin. So the sphingomyelin structure is, it is a sphingosin plus fatty acid plus phosphatidylcholine and that is the sphingomyelin molecule which is rich in a neuronal membrane. Now if I replace this phosphatidylcholine and add glucose here, and this entire molecule now is, so it is a ceramide plus glucose. Ceramide plus glucose is a glucosyl ceramide, which is also called as glucocerebroside. Another name for glucosyl ceramide is glucocerebroside. So, glucocerebroside, it is a ceramide plus fatty acid plus glucose. That is what is glucosyl ceramide or glucocerebroside. This can be part of your uh, cell membranes. Now, in general, ceramide plus monosaccharide. So, ceramide plus monosaccharide means ceramide plus glucose. This is called as cerebroside. That is what is the cerebroside. So, cerebroside is, this is a general term here, cerebroside. So, whenever you refer to cerebroside, cerebroside is nothing but it is a ceramide plus a monosaccharide. Here, the monosaccharide is glucose. It can be galactose, it can be mannose. So, ceramide plus monosaccharide is a cerebroside. Now, in place of monosaccharide, so I am going to take out glucose there and replace that with disaccharide lactose. I am going to add lactose here. Lactose is glu glucose plus galactose is lactose. So, ceramide plus lactose. So, this molecule now we call it as lactosyl ceramide, lactosyl ceramide, lactosyl ceramide is a type of globoside, this is a globoside now, this is a globoside, so globoside is ceramide plus disaccharide, is a globoside, ceramide is a plus monosaccharide, I told you it is a cerebroside, now ceramide plus lactose, that is a disaccharide, ceramide plus disaccharide is a globoside, so lactosyl ceramide is an example for globoside. Now in this position here, third carbon position, so if an oligosaccharide is attached plus neuraminic acid or sialic acid is attached, 
So in the third carbon position of sphingosine, so sphingosine, fatty acid, oligosaccharide plus sialic acid or neuraminic acid. Another name for sialic acid is neuraminic acid. Sialic acid or neuraminic acid. If it is attached there, neuraminic acid can also be written as NaNa, N-acetyl neuraminic acid there. So sphingosine plus fatty acid plus oligosaccharide plus sialic acid, we call that molecule as ganglioside. So the ceramide plus oligosaccharide plus N-acetyl uraminic acid nana. So together we call that molecule as ganglioside. The ganglioside. So we have three things here. One is a cerebroside. Cerebroside is ceramide plus monosaccharide. We have a globoside. Globoside is ceramide plus oligosaccharide is a globoside. And then we have gangliosite that is ceramide oligosaccharide plus N-acetyl neuraminic acid is a gangliosite. Now we have three types of gangliosites that is gangliosite mono 1, gangliosite mono 2, gangliosite mono 3. So their complexity will increase as you go from ganglio GM3 gangliosite into GM1 gangliosite. So depending on the complexity of the molecule like GM1 gangliosite is the bigger molecule than the GM2 and then the GM3. So they will uh, move to their respective position in uh, chromatography column. So GM1 is present in the first position in the chromatography column. GM2 in the second position because it is a little smaller molecule. So it will move a little down. And then GM3 gangliosite will be all the way down in the chromatography column. That is why these are referred as GM1 gangliosite 2 and GM2 and GM3 gangliosite depending on their complexity. Simplest gangliosite is GM3 gangliosite. Complex gangliosite is GM1 gangliosite. And all these sphingolipids, so once they are degraded, means when the cell turnover occurs, so the sphingolipids which are part of cell membrane, so they are going to undergo degradation in the lysosomes. We have a battery of enzymes in the lysosome which will work on sphingolipid molecules and break the compound into individual molecules. We have different types of enzymes which are all acid hydrolases present in the lysosomes which will be working on sphingolipid molecules. So this is all about uh, in brief about synthesis of glycerophospholipids and degradation of glycerophospholipids and also synthesis uh, the formation of uh, sphingolipids and degradation of sphingolipids. I hope this video has helped you in understanding uh, glycerophospholipids and sphingophospholipids. If you have any questions so kindly let me know in the comment section below. And also, uh, if you like this video, kindly give a thumbs up. See you in my next video. Thank you.